And verily we render our praise unto Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek his help and we seek his forgiveness. And we turn in repentance to Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala for the evilness of our souls and the evil consequences of our deeds. He whom Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided, there is none to lead him astray. And he whom Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala has led astray, there is none to lead him aright. And I bear witness that there is no deity of worship other than Allah, he is alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. We send peace and blessings upon our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family and upon his companions until the day of judgment. And my ba'd. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem. Wa atakum minkum ummatun yad'oona ila al-khayr. Ya'muruna bil ma'roof wa yanhana ala munka. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in this ayah, he says, let there arise from amongst you a group who calls to the khayr, who calls to that which is good. Ya'muruna bil ma'roof and exhorting the good and forbidding that which is evil. And verily, these are those who are successful. And when we take a look at this ayah, and this ayah is used for Dalil on quite a few things. On quite a few things. Of course, it's used to where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising those who believe to call to that which is good. Call to that which is good. And of course, he's also advising us to exhort that which is ma'roof. Ma'roof meaning all good things. And forbid the evil that humans, that Allah, his creation commit, the evil that they commit. 
and these will be a successful people. These will be of the muflihun, those people who enter into the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and possibly acquire the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the benefit that we take from this ayat, one of the benefits is what I took from the tafsir on one of the scholars, Ad-Dahak. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat, he's speaking to a sp specific group of the companions and those who will come after them who perform jihad, struggle, fi sabilillah, okay, and those who are learning, who are scholars. So what he's basically saying is, is that those who call to that which is good and forbid the evil will be people who have, how can I put it, who have actually strove and made a commitment to learning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to call to that which is good, which is the deen, this is the good. al khair is al-Islam. The good is al-Islam. Exhorting everything that is which is good is everything that which is in the hudud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have set up for the human being to live within those confines. And the evil is, or the, the munkar, is those things that are outside of the boundaries of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have set up. Transgression. But in order to call to this, now notice when he says scholars, that you have to have knowledge of what you're calling to. You can't call a person to be a mechanic if you don't know if you don't know anything about mechanics or engineering or science or medicine, or whatever the thing that you're calling somebody to. You have to have knowledge of that particular thing. And this was part of the mission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and we recited this ayah last week. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim. Wa ma arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alameen. That we have not sent you except as a mercy to all of mankind. Now of course last week we put that ayah in the perspective of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being merciful to humankind. The kindness and the humanness that he exhibited to the people around him. But part of that Rahmah is also that when he came, he taught the people how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this knowledge that he brought and that we seek to better our ibadah is in fact ibadah, is worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد مان الله على مؤمنين إذ بعث فيهم رسولا من أنفسهم يدلو عليهم عياته يزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين He says that verily Allah has bestowed his favor upon those who believe in that he had raised a messenger from amongst them. He recites of the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him, meaning he recites the Quran. He purifies them by the deeds that they do inwardly and outwardly. Where you ali muhumul kitab wa hikmah. He teaches them the book and the hikmah. The hikmah meaning the way to follow the book and the only way that you can follow the book, meaning the Quran, is to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he taught them by way of the sunnah 
how to follow the Quran. He teaches them the book and he teaches them how to follow the book, which is the Sunnah. And verily before that, they were in clear and manifest error. Meaning that even before Abu Bakr, Umar, all of the top Sahaba, before they became, before they took their Shahada, before they became supporters of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Islam, the Prophet himself had to teach them. They had to learn what it was they needed to know to properly, properly worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this was his mission. He taught them how to recite the Quran properly when it came to them. He taught them how to purify themselves inward and outwardly by, of course, the physical actions of purifying yourself as far as wudu, istinja, and the ghusl. And he taught them how to purify themselves inwardly by making the various, the various prayers that we make voluntarily. The Tahajjah prayer, the widow prayer, what type of du'as to make to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he took them and he taught them the book, the Sharia, the law. The law that we have to live by if we say that we Muslim. So this was a part of his job. This was his mission. But the law makes it clear that in kanu min qablu lafi dalalim mubin. Even though Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them believers, he also makes it clear that before Muhammad came to teach them their religion, they were also in clear and manifest error. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put a very, very, very and this is where I'm going with this khutbah today. He put a very high status on learning. On learning the deen. On learning how to properly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that when he caught, when he captured enemies after the battle of Badr, he ransomed them off by allowing them to teach a Sahaba how to read. If you can teach 10 of my companions how to read, then we let you go. And this was very, very important because without the ilm, the knowledge that you need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will not worship him properly. And even if Allah says this about the Sahaba, we can never ever put ourselves above the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The people whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the deen to. And they received pure Islam. When they received the lessons or how to recite the Quran, they were receiving the pure recitation. The Prophet Muhammad said, he said in one hadith, Men ahaba an yaqara'ul Quran ghaddan kamma unzila fa yaqara'uhu fa yaqara'uhu fi qira'ati ibn um abdan. He said that if any of you love to recite the Quran fresh as if it was just revealed, then let him recite it in the recitation of Ibn Um Abdan, who was Ibn Mas'ud, another name for Ibn Mas'ud. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's exhorting the people. So what he's telling them is he knows how to recite the book. He recites the book properly. So recite it like him if you want to do that. <laughs> he said, and he would always compliment his, 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 his companions on what they learned from him. 
He would always compliment them. He had a companion by the name of Mu'ad. He said, Mu'ad, what is the greatest ayat in the Quran? He said, I don't, Mu'ad, Allah and his messenger know best. They were, one thing about the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, they never had the answer. They never said the answer, even if they knew. They would all, this was a humbleness thing. This was a, 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 a humility. Allah and his messenger know best. Okay? So he says, I will teach you what the greatest ayat in the Quran. There's two hadith on this. One where he asked him and he didn't know. And then one where he actually said it was ayatul kursi. The greatest ayat of the Quran. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he congratulated him, he told him, he hit him on his chest and said, may knowledge be good to you. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prayed, he made dua to Allah that his little cousin Ibn Abbas would be able to understand the Quran. His dua was, Allahum faqahu fi deen wa ta'awila. He said, Oh Allah, give him understanding of the deen and its interpretation. In other words, make him be able to interpret the religion. And we find that a lot of tafsir goes back to Ibn Abbas. Matter of fact, a lot of the school, all of the schools of tafsir go back to a particular companion depending on where that, where that companion uh, uh, resided. So this thing with education, and even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he had a teacher. His teacher was Jibreel alayhi salam. The famous hadith of where Jibril came. They, they, they wrote a book about it. Uh, he came to teach you your religion. Angel Jibril came in. Umar Ibn al-Khattab reported this hadith. And he said, and this is why we tell the brothers that we're not only just in Juma, but he demonstrated an adept for learning. Angel Jibril did. Because when he came in, Umar said that the man came in. And he did not have the look of a traveler. He had a wife. He was very handsome, but he was clean. So part of the adab for seeking knowledge is to come into the lesson or the classroom clean. And he came close to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where his knee was against his knee. So that means what? The adab, another adab for learning is to get as close as possible to the teacher as you possibly can. This is why when we tell the brothers to move up for Juma, you should move up. Get close. Get close to the khatib so that you can hear and take your lessons that you need to take from him. This is all adab. This is all proper conduct. So every time he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is Islam? And the Prophet told him what Islam was. He said, Sadaqta. You have spoken the truth. What is Iman? And the Prophet told him what Iman was. And he said, Sadaqta. You have spoken the truth. And he said, what is Islam? And he told him what Islam was. And he said, Sadaqta. You have spoken the truth. And then he left, and the prophet said, go see where he was. Go see where that man went at. Omar said he went to the door and he couldn't find him. He said, that was Angel Jibril. He came to teach you your religion. When the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, went to make wudu for salat, it was Angel Jibril who taught him how to make wudu. It was Angel Jibril who taught him how to make salat. It was Angel Jibreel alayhi salam who taught him how to make the fast of Ramadan. So this knowledge, this information 
is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that what we can perform a bada in a proper way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Ma kana al mu'minuna li yanfiru kafatan falawla nafara min kulli firqatan minhum ta'ifatun li yatafaqahu fi dini wali yandiru qawmahum idha raja'u ilayhim la'alakum yahdharun he says in this ayah, it is not befitting that everybody go out to fight in the war. But there should be a party of you that stay back in order that they may get an understanding of the deen. Meaning what? That when they went out on Ghaswa, which is the raids or the military expeditions that they would go out on, Okay, Allah is advising them to leave some people back so that if any revelation would come, they could learn it. Then, when they return, they would teach the people who left, who, who went out the war. Again, so that they might beware of all evil, so that they could learn this deen. So, when we talk about Learning. And we talk about ilm. We talk about ilm. This is the big word now. Ilm. Everybody's trying to see ilm now. Okay? We are only talking about knowledge that will ward off evil from you in order that you might be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the proper way. <laughs> لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له ملك له خم يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تلاب العلم فريدة على كل مسلم ومسلمة. The Prophet Muhammad said in this simple hadith, he made it very clear. The desire for knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim, male and female. We had, if we've been watching the news, I didn't know, I just got to look at the news the other day, you know, you have stuff, you see so much stuff going on. But there was a little girl who was shot over in Pakistan because she wanted to go to school. Only because she wanted to go to school. So, so they said, and Allah knows best who's responsible. Okay? Allah knows best who's responsible. They said, with this person, it might not have been that. But nonetheless, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the desire for knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim, male and female. This knowledge that is obligatory upon us is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, how to worship him properly. So I exhort my beloved brothers and sisters to begin to contemplate that. If you want to call somebody to the dean, you have to have knowledge of the dean. And the knowledge that you acquire is supposed to enhance your taqwa. It's not knowledge that you just go around and you just yak, 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 you know, you know, you know. It's knowledge that would enhance your taqwa. First, knowledge is to be acquired to be put into practice. The word scholar on Yom al Qiyamah, as per Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, will be the scholar who knew but didn't practice what he knew. He gonna be the worst scholar. 
he's tantamount to a hypocrite. See? So this knowledge that we're talking about has to be knowledge that you yourself put into practice and you call the people to it. We have come to a certain path now. Okay? That, and that we have to learn some of the Arabic language. It is encumbered upon us to learn some of the language so that we can read the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me tell you, okay? Reading the English is not reading what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. That, that's, that's it. That's the bottom line. That's not reading what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And some things are lost in translation. Some things, some things in the Quran, some ayats mean one thing or it can mean something else depending on how you are reciting it. If you make a stop here, it means one thing. If you keep, which is legal, which is legal, but if you're not reciting the proper words with the vowels in the right place, then you are altering the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you haven't taken the time to learn anything, you must learn the Quran, man. You must learn how to recite it. It's, not, it's an obligation. And you have to, sometimes you have to say stop to yourself. I'm going somewhere and I'm going to learn this. I'm going to make an attempt to learn. You just can't keep going and saying it's all right if I don't. I had a brother tell me, that's, a brother told me, not long, a couple weeks ago, that that's what he he had made a decision to do that until he read something that showed him I can't. I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to do the best I can by winging it. But we can't do that. That's we're not allowed to do that by way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then and then you get baraka. You get baraka for learning. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you read one harf of the Quran, you get ten hasana. And I don't mean alif lam mean as a harf. I mean alif, one harf, lam, one harf, mean one harf. That's 30 hasana. That's 30 blessings you get for just reading those three letters. But if you don't make an attempt, you are depriving yourself of something to put in your bank so when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not saying you have to learn. Then this is very important. This is very important. Because what it will do will, it will, the more people that learn Quran, have an understanding of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put it into practice that will enhance the community. Because then what we have in there, you will have a real understanding of what your obligation is to the Jama'ah. But if we constantly go around and around and around and go around that thing, man, then we we gonna be, we're gonna have, we got we're gonna be in a bad situation. We're going to be in a bad situation. It seems like the desire for learning has been lost somewhere along the road. It, it's been lost somewhere. People don't really, you know, we don't really care. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I've seen that I think that all of us that have been Muslim for some while, the prophet, what he used to do, Sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is that when somebody came in and took shahad, right? What he would do was he would assign a sahaba to that individual. 
until that individual came up to par or where he needed to be. What I find that we do, we glad people come and take shahada. We glad they come, they take shahada. Alhamdulillah, everybody's happy. Allahu Akbar. But then they go and you don't see them. You don't even know where. Well, then you see him at the E a year later. Oh, that, that guy, we gave him shahada about a year ago. Where you been? I, 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 he just stopped talking crazy. You know what I mean? He don't, he don't even know where he's been at. All right? But what happened is we deprived him of the companionship of knowledge that he need. He, here's a year later, he might not even know how to make salah. And I'm quite sure we have come across this over and over and over again. But one reason why we can't help him is because we can't help ourselves. We have disallowed ourselves to get into the serious study of Islam. And that's something that we're going to have to put a stop to. But it takes, it's an individual effort. It's hard when you're teaching a class. Here's a man that's a Hafiz of Quran. And he has a class and only three people show up. So what that means is everybody else knows how to recite Quran. That's what it means. Or you have a class on some fit, or you have class on this. Nobody shows up. Nobody cares. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran to save yourself and your family from the fire. This is what he's talking about. To acquire the knowledge that you need to know to better serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I first came here at the tender age of 22 in 1975, the first thing I did when I walked, the first thing they did to me when they walked, walked in that door, put a book in my face. That's the, right, shit? That's the first thing they did. I still got a book with Ali Shabani's name on it in my house. I wasn't supposed to take it, but I got it. I might have done confess. <laughs> yeah. But I, that's the, that's what the, that was a thing here. That was a big, learning was a big thing here. When you came in, Sheikh Nafi and Sheikh Imam Ali, they, were all, they, they wouldn't give you shahada when you just walked in the door. I couldn't understand that then. I couldn't understand it. But now I see the wisdom in it. Because see, if you really want it, then that means next week you're going to come back to class. Then you're going to come back to class. Then you're going to come back to class. You're already Muslim. You keep coming to class and make a salat. You're already Muslim. If you make, once you make salat, you Muslim. That's my fatwa. Because in salat, you got to say, I bear witness that there's no God but Allah, Muhammad is a mess. You got to tell you, take shahada. So once you make salat, you Muslim. So it was just a formality to say it in front of everybody. You see? So we have to get back on track with that. We have to, just like this place is full right now, okay, the classes should be full like that. The classes should be full like that. We actually, right now, and like I said, I came in here when I was 22. Listen to this very carefully. I came here when I was 22. I'm 60. So, you know, you start looking at your own mortality after a certain age. You start to realize, I ain't got long. I don't have 60 more years. I'll tell you that now. Allah know best. Okay? So what we have to understand is, especially you younger brothers with little children like that right there, that you are the parents of the future leaders of the Muslims in this city. So they're going to have to be able to do a job. Just like we had to do the job after our elders left or passed on, they're going to have to do a job. 
you better educate yourself or you educate yourself now so that the children that are coming up under you will be better educated Islamically. And when you take a look at it, and I'm going to close on this, when you take a look at it, everybody's not going to be a scholar. We already understand that. But we do have a legacy. Our legacy is those scholars who established the deen from the Sahaba of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu anhu. Okay? Then we have as black men or black people in America, we have another legacy. Because of the scholarship that came out, the Islamic scholarship that came out of Africa. See, a lot of times, you know, you hear people saying, these people don't know, you act like this because you don't know your past. But sometimes when you know your past, it gives you dignity. Even if you was a slave, or your forefather was a slave, because they weren't always slaves. Our people were great people in the cities of Shanghai, Malai, Timbuktu, great Islamic scholars. There was uh, 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 Dr. Hakim Abdullah, Abdullah Hakim Quick was in Timbuktu, the remnants of Timbuktu, and they still have the works of the scholars that came from that city in ancient times. And now they are working. He was working with them. This was like a year or two ago when I seen this. He's working now so that they can. You couldn't pick up the books. Were so old that if you touch them. You know, the pages would, would break up. So what they're doing now is they have re raised the funds to be able to preserve that. That's a part of our history also. And then on an international level, it was the Muslims who introduced algebra, chemistry. And a lot of the sciences that you see today, it was Muslims who established that. It was the Muslims who went into Europe and civilized them people. It was the Muslims. And we are the descendants, whether they came from, no matter where they came from. They are us. They are the Muslims that came before us. So what happened, the reason why they were able to do this is because they learned the knowledge that they needed to know to worship Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised them up and made them a benefit to the world. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim fi li alameen inna ka hamidu majid. ربنا إننا آمنا بمن زلت وتبعنا صولا فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين وتبعنا مسلمين وتب علينا إنك تواب الرحيم ورحمنا إنك أهو الرحمين وزقنا إنك أنت خير الرازقين ربنا لا تذق قلوبنا بعد أديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك وحاب ربنا فق علينا صبرا وثابت أقدامنا ونصورنا على قوم الكافرين ربنا ذلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفرنا وترحمنا لقولنا من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله والصحب والسلام تسليم كثير سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قام السلام الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي لا سلام حي لا سلام الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Allah, 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غيب المعذوب عليهم ولا الدالين الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يسبع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين عيدهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وصيع قجوس كرسي السماوات والأرض ولا يعد حده ما هو عالي العظيم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمد عليهم غيب المعذوب عليهم ولا الدالين والله الذي لا إله إلا هو علم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المعين العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله خالق بر مصور له أسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله لمن حمل الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم 